Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's session. Today's topic of discussion is game theory. Now, what do you mean by game theory? Game theory is a game, actually a game is actually an interaction between multiple people in which each person's payoff is affected by the decisions made by another. We do, we all are subjects of game theory. We all play different types of games on a day-to-day -day life. Maybe when you have a, when you, when you say to your best friend that we'll go for an outing today and by the time of, uh, the, of evening when you're about to go for an outing, you give a call and say that I'm not coming. So your friend takes a decision. Maybe he, he takes a decision of calling another friend and going for a movie or an outing or he might take a decision of staying inside or um, playing games with somebody else. So based on what that you do, what uh, your decision how does it affect the decision of the others so this is what is meant by games and game theory now where did it all start from it all started in way back 1928 when professor john van newman and oscar mongstein uh, had a little bit of basic uh, study about games and how the were the games that people play now the very famous book that games that people play and the game theory are the basis of the bigger um, uh, what is it a dimension of games that we see today now um, with the uh, offset of professor john nash or dr john nash game theory became very popular now if you want to know who was jo john nash and his life you could just watch the oscar winning movie a beautiful mind played by russell crowe now the entire movie speaks about John Nash and his extraordinary life. So um, it's John Nash who really made game theory popular. And the approach of game theory is to understand or to seek or to determine the rival's most pro profitable counter strategy to our own best move. Okay, so it is about the decisions that two or more people make and how does it impact the competitor or the rival. Okay, so this is the rock, base rock on which the decision theory stands. Prisoner's Dilemma. Now, this is one of the very interesting strategic game. Without, in, without mentioning about this, we will not be able to speak about game theory. So this is one of the very classical example which speaks about games that people play. Okay, so there are two prisoners. And these two prisoners are uh, have done a crime. Their crime can be imagined something like drug dealing or something. Now they have committed the crime together. Now what happens is after this uh, this crime scene, uh, the police came to know about this, and uh, but they have no clue. These people have left no clue. Now each prisoner is interviewed separately, and there is nothing any contacts between them. They decide individually to confess or to deny the crime taking into account the possible decisions of the other prisoner so i said once again it is a strategic game so based on the dominant strategy that is giving the best results regarding of the decision taken by the other each prisoner chooses so uh, setup is like there are two different chambers which uh, which in which is very different apart miles apart so they cannot communicate with each other. So now what happens is there are four different scenarios. If prisoner A confesses and prisoner B also confesses, then both of them will be put under jail for five years. Now if prisoner A confesses and prisoner B remains silent, then prisoner a is left free, but prisoner B who remained silent, who, who hid the facts will be put under bars for 20 years. Now if prisoner A remains silent and prisoner B confesses, then prisoner B is left free. And the last strategy is something like if both prisoner A and prisoner B are remaining silent, then they will be put under bars for one year each. Now there is a lot of uh, discussions about this and the Nash equilibrium. We are not going to do all those things, but I am taking this particular prisoner's dilemma to let you understand as 
this is the basis of um, what you say. This is how a game theory looks like. It is all about taking decisions, looking, thinking about the opponent. Now let's come to a practical example of a game. Now there are two rival in the market. Like in the toothpaste market, we have seen a very strong competition happening between Colgate and Pepsodent. Now uh, Colgate and Pepsodent are coming out with a new variant called charcoal variant. Now. With this new variant in the market, uh, they are coming out with different strategies of promoting it. Now, Colgate is deciding whether they'll, they'll come out with digital marketing and uh, Pepsodent is coming out with a strategy of going for celebrity endorsement. So depending on each other, since both of them are playing in the same market and both of them are uh, segmented for the same people, it, it will depend on their individual uh, strategies that they will be able to capture the market. So this could be one of the very practical example of game theory. The key elements of a game. The key elements of a game are basically the player, the strategy, the payoff, the information and the rationality. Now the player are basically the people who are interacting. It could be a business, it could be two people, it could be three people, it could be many people, it could be different organizations like that. Strategies are what options do they come out with? Like for example, one people, like people, there are two different, as we already discussed, uh, Pepsodent is coming out with advertisements. They are coming out with uh, TV advertisements, newspaper advertisements like that. At the same time, the other people are coming out with uh, social media marketing and digital marketing. Also, these are the strategies that they are coming out with so that they can uh, increase their reach and their profit. So payoffs are what are their incentives? What do, do, do they get? What are the different profits and the laws that they make? Information is what all do they know about the competitor, about the market, about the different environment altogether? And rationality is what do they think? Do they think like they should increase their profit? Now, the assumptions of the game theory or the what are the different assumptions of the game altogether? We have to understand that in game theory, we, there are finite number of competitors. We can't say that there are infinite number of competitors. It could be like two to many. Then there is a conflict of interest between them. It is not like they all are friends and they are going to they are coming in unison and they are going ahead with a lot of uh, teamwork. No, there is little conflict of interest between them. Each player has available with him finite number of possible strategies. Now, each player has different strategies and it is like it's, it's a, it is countable number. It's a finite number. Now, this is the most important thing. One player is attempting to maximize his gains and the other player is attempting to minimize his losses. Players know all possible available choices, but does not know which one is going to be chosen by the competitor. Now, that is a, that is a little bit of tension because there is a possibility of uh, the other one choosing a strategy that might reduce their loss, that them reduce their profit. Players simultaneously select their respective course of action, which means they play together. It's not like one plays and after looking into that, other plays a later time. No, they play together simultaneously. The payoff is fixed and determined in advance. And the players have to make individual decisions without direct communication as, as just like we saw in the prisoner's diet. Now, what is the major significance of what, what does this game theory signifies? It helps in decision making. It provides the scientific quantitative technique and gives insight into situations of conflicting interest. Now, game theory is uh, actually um, an area of mathematics that really helps different areas of uh, science as well as social sciences. It impacts uh, the different areas of management, the business, it impacts science, it impacts arts, everywhere. So basically, wherever decision has to be made, that, that, that the game theory gets implied there. And this is actually a scientific proven thing. It is not of heuristics. It is not of uh, hitches that you make. It is out of scientific proven technique. And it also gives insight as what the opponents, what the, uh, what the environment and everything in that particular scenario is. Um, intenting on. Now, the major limitations of the game theory is 
that uh, the player has the knowledge about his own payoffs and payoffs of the opponent. Now, this is not really practical because uh, take the example of the Pepsodent and the, the Colgate thing. Now, Colgate will not be aware as what are the different strategies that the Pepsodent might take. Now, even though there are business intelligence and all those things which really makes you uh, peep into their privacies, but it is at many times not practical to understand what the opponent or the competitor is thinking. Now, the method of solution becomes complex with increase in number of players. Now, if it is a players, if it is a like mobile market, if it is an oligopoly market, where there are number of players, then it becomes very difficult to uh, to come out with uh, a pair of metrics and all. Now, in this game theory, it is assumed that both the players are equally wise and they have they behave in a rational way, but this is also not possible. So, these are the limitations of. Now let us try to understand what you mean by a payoff table. A payoff table is the quantitative measure of satisfaction that a player gets at the end of the play. In terms of gains and losses, when the player selects their particular strategy and can be represented in the form of a matrix called payoff matrix. Now let us look at this particular matrix here. You have player X and player Y. And player X has two strategies, X1 and X2. Player Y has two strat three strategies, Y1, Y2 and Y3. Now what happens is like, let's look at the number 24. Now it is a positive sign. It is a positive number. Now what do you mean by this 24 is? And a positive value in the payoff matrix means that player X is gaining 24 and player Y is losing 24. So positive sign in the payoff matrix shows that it is in favor of player X. Now imagine like uh, there is the number 8 is minus. The X1 and Y3 corresponding uh, matrix is minus. <coughs> minus 8. Now what does it mean is like the game is in favor of player Y. Player Y is gaining and player X is losing. Whenever there is a minus sign it shows that player Y is gaining and player X is losing. So in this payoff matrix, the positive payoff is the gain to uh, maximizing player X and loss to minimizing player Y. If X chooses strategy X1 and Y chooses strategy Y1, then X gain is 32 and Y's loss is 32. Now, there are different types of game strategies. In decision-making environment, you can understand that there are there are there are scenarios of certainty where you are really certain that things will happen there are scenarios of uncertain and risk now decision the game strategies are the ones in which we are we are going to study is based on the certainty uh, parameter so for games that are certain of their outcomes there are two bifurcations that is non-competitive and competitive now in competitive strategies you have Pure and mixed strategy. So in pure strategy, you have minimax, maximin, or it's also called saddle point. In mixed strategy, you have three, two by two order payoff metrics, two, two by n or m into two order payoff metrics, and m in, m into n payoff metrics. So based on the strategies, the methods or the uh, stra the ways in which we solve them are also different. So we'll be discussing that later. So these are the different types of game strategies. To summarize, we be began by saying what is a game and then we spoke about uh, the basis of game theory, the history of the game theory. Then we spoke about the prisoner's dilemma and uh, later we, we saw a practical game, example of a game where Colgate and Pepsodent were rival rivaling in the market. Then the, the key, we spoke about the key elements of a game, player, strategies, payoff, information and rationality. We also spoke about the assumptions of game and the significance of game theory. We saw the major limitations of game theory and we had a very clear understanding of what does a payoff matrix look like and what the positive and negative values in the payoff matrix indicate. Finally, we spoke about the different types of game strategies. 
so i hope you might have got a clear understanding about game theory so i would uh, ask if you could go and uh, read a little bit more about game theory so that you will be really interested in this particular topic so thanks for watching my webinar this is jitin benedict thank you very much